Hello and welcome to the Design of Craft Beer hosted by Mother Sponge. My name is Sean Kelly, founder and creative director of Mother Sponge Beverage Branding Agency in San Diego, California. For the inaugural year of San Diego Design Week, we're proud to present this series of discussions with designers working in the craft beer industry. The San Diego Tijuana region is home to over 150 craft breweries, including many award-winning and internationally recognized innovators. In this series, you'll meet four local graphic designers who have played a large part in bringing the spirit and vision of some of our region's most notable beer brands to life. Thank you for joining us and cheers to the capital of craft. For this segment of the Design of Craft Beer, we will be chatting with Kristen Buter, who's been working at Modern Times since 2015. As the design manager during a period of crazy growth for the company, Kristen has helped her team tackle an incredible volume of work. Enjoy the talk. Kristen Buter is the design manager and guru at Modern Times and has been there for several years now. Um, I've been kind of, you know, one of many, many uh, fans in the design world of what's been happening at Modern Times and uh, always curious about what's been going on. So I'm really excited that you're here today to talk with me about kind of behind the scenes, uh, you know, uh, activities over there. And yeah, thanks again for joining today. And, and I'm excited to kind of hear more about Modern Times. Yeah, thanks for having me. Stoked to uh, be a part of this. For sure. So um, I was uh, curious kind of about how you ended up in San Diego. I think you went to school back east. Did you grow up back east? Uh, you know, what was your kind of history pre-San Diego? Yeah, so I'm from Virginia originally, uh, Chesapeake, Virginia. It's kind of like southeast, but I went to a university out there. I did the whole community college thing, changed my major like six times. Hmm. Um, and then I ended up at Old Dominion University. And I had two professors who were from Texas, um, a school in Texas teaching design. And they were just super awesome teachers. We had a really small class. I think it was like 15 people in my graduating design class nice. uh, um, over a few years. And it was just two really great professors that honestly kind of taught me like everything that I knew. And uh, I remember sitting, yeah, it was, I was super lucky to have them. It was uh, kind of like our final semester and we're all like sitting around just talking. And I remember saying at the time to like my classmates, how I really wanted to design beer labels one day, you know, just like never thought it would actually happen. Just like, oh, that'd be so cool, you know, like making beer labels. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, fast forward like six years, but I had some friends living out in San Diego. So a month after I graduated, I packed up my car and I drove out here. Nice. Um, I had super big dreams to like find a design job, uh, bounced around in the service industry for a while. Um, that was kind of the biggest challenge of graduating from art school and then leaving the area that I was from. Yeah. You know, it doesn't really matter if you have a good book, if you have no experience, it's really hard to get people to kind of, you know, look twice at you. Yeah. And I had, you know, a little bit of experience with some school design jobs, but know like solid you know on the paper on the books experience um so i got denied by a ton of uh design jobs i applied for a lot of stuff went to a lot of interviews but nobody would hire me because i had no experience um yeah. so that was a pretty big bummer. yeah plus like you don't have that network so, of you know exactly you met yeah. while you were at school and maybe you did an internship or whatever so yeah um, yeah that's nice to know anyone yeah for sure well so the other thing I was kind of wondering about is when did you get into beer? Like, it sounds like in college you were already kind of pretty interested in packaging design. You know, did you become a yeah. beer nerd uh, in college or did that happen like after you got to San Diego? Um, I'll be honest, when I first started drinking beer, um, I was drinking Blue Moon, you know, like I thought it was the cool craft beer. Yeah. That was, was sure the first like craft scene that I got into. Um, I started working actually serving at Gordon Biersch, um, oh, yeah. which so we had it back we had it back east, but it seemed a little bit cooler there because there weren't beer bars on every corner. You know, yeah. there weren't a ton of local breweries, so yeah, it was a corporate you know brewery restaurant, 
but they made really great beer. Each location had its own brewer, and that's kind of how I learned about beer. It was all, all German style um, sorts of beer and brewing, so I kind of learned about it then, and I actually transferred with that job out to San Diego, uh-huh. and I worked at the location in San Diego, which has since closed, um, yep. RIP. Yep. But uh, that kind of actually helped me, I think, get into modern times like a little bit, you know, because I had a little bit of knowledge of beer. Yeah. Um, so when I first started at Modern Times, I actually was just a, a beer tender. Um, but oh, I had a little bit of beer knowledge. So mm-hmm. that kind of like got like my toe in the door, you know, yep. and that's totally. sort of how like I discovered the beer scene. Yeah, for sure. That's what's so crazy. Uh, Modern Times, when I first started, we had under 50 employees. It was a tiny thing. Like, you knew everyone. Um, I miss those days, like, every day. Um, It was, yeah, it was totally different, just a much smaller vibe. And at the time, um, the art department was just a one woman. It was my boss. Uh, My boss, Amy Crone, she was the... You know, she was kind of helping out with coffee and also art, but it was all just her. Yeah. Um, so about six months in, I think she started needing some help. Um, and she reached out to me, I think the following, about a year after I'd been there, I, I was offered a full-time um, mm-hmm. design job with her. So it was just me and her for a while doing design stuff and the workload kind of just started to grow from there. So mm-hmm. Kind of like my beginning was a ton of social media graphics, yeah. um, a lot of like event graphics, you know, just collateral like that. So not any super heavy projects, um, kind of a lot of day-to-day stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I, um, I'm curious about like, you know, some of the tasting rooms uh, earlier on had, you know, like installations, floppy disks, mm-hmm. sticky notes, like a lot of weird stuff. Have you had a chance to get involved in any of that? One of the first uh, ones that we helped out with, um, and Amy was like, hey, hey, we're gonna go paint the floor, you know, this weekend up in LA. So we're like, cool. This is kind of our first, you know, time on on site with a location. Uh, That was actually a full weekend. I think like 16 full hours of us on our hands and knees, like stenciling the floor with these like plastic uh you know like pattern things and like rolly brushes uh it was it wasn't fun i wouldn't <laughs> say um it was like pretty like backbreaking work just like on your hands and knees painting yeah. this like kind of dirty dark floor that you know it's pretty dark in there you can't even really tell <laughs> um, yeah. um but that was kind of like our first experience and then we started uh helping out with some of the installations. Mm -hmm. Now it's kind of become a little more structured because we're so big now. We kind of have designated people that help with the um, tasting room build out. Another another, like good old days kind of scenario. (laughs) Exactly, yeah. Back in the day, it was a a lot more like, you know, down and dirty work, but definitely kind of got in the hang of it. Also, after we opened a couple, we figured out a lot of things that, you know, work better. Yeah, and cool. and then we also brought screen printing in house um, a few years ago. It's mm-hmm. been over two years, but Hans, he's our uh, resident screen printer, our Prince of Prints. Um, mm-hmm. So it's been really rad having him on board because we get to do a lot of uh, more unique stuff. For example, we've started screen printing. Um, well, we I had nothing to do with it. He's, you know, been like screen printing our bar tiles for some of the bar facades at our uh, tasting room. So that's been really cool. Yeah, for the most part, yeah, mostly, you know, t-shirts, we do bandanas, tote bags. Mm -hmm. Um, But he's actually, we've started uh, screen printing labels as well. Oh, wow. Um, Yeah, yeah, kind of our first, gosh, I want to say it was maybe this time last year was really the first go around that we had at it. Um, we have this set called MT Ultra, um, where it's these three just super decadent stouts. Uh-huh. Um, and they're like wax dip bottles, but it was the first time that we screen printed uh, the labels. Kenny, oh, yeah, Kenny took the lead on that one with like the design. It was kind of done around where the colors would overlay each other and kind of create, you know, like a third color, just like a really cool technique. Uh, so last year we started screen printing 
some yeah. beer labels for just more special beers. Yeah, yeah. Like special a really cool special. Exactly. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can't do that with 100,000 <laughs> pieces. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely a big learning curve because the first time we did it, we had to hand label all the bottles. So it was like an all hands on deck from across the company, just assembling these soup cases hand labeling everything hand dipping them in the wax it was a uh, pretty yeah. labor intensive but the final product was for sure yeah. something to be proud of that's right uh, one of the things that's really stood out is like the you know geometric um design motifs that have played out on, on a 16 ounce i think it's a specialty ipas or something but i was i was yeah. wondering what you know if you could tell me a little bit more about that and just kind of talk about sort of where it started and how it's evolved over the years. Yeah, so we've been doing, we, we call them uh, in our terms, just like the one-off sleeved cans. Um, they're just, you know, all the fancy cans. Uh, but Amy designed the first couple that were kind of type-based designs. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I started lending a hand and uh, she and Jacob, uh, Jacob, our owner, they're, they've always been really into a lot of, you know, retro vintage, uh, kind of like 60s, 70s wallpaper was kind of one of our initial inspirations for some of those. And then it kind of evolved from there into different genres of design, uh, you know, fashion textiles that you see, stuff we see like every day in the world, um, kind of into like some more. When Kenny came on, he's been a really like killer contribution to just uh kind of like testing the waters and expanding it you know even further past what we had tried mm -hmm. doing a lot of uh type-based stuff um he's been really great and then we've gotten Corey on as well uh doing a lot of kind of like hand design type and just like altering things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um yeah. so it's really kind of exploded from there just you know testing out all the different tools and photoshop and illustrator just yeah. kind of guys the limit when it comes to those we have pretty great freedom to you know design kind of like whatever we're feeling you know if like we see someone that inspires us like a cool designer we can kind of rip off their style and turn it into a beer label with all that you've seen while you've been there uh, what are some of your like really favorite moments or projects kind of along the way uh, riding this sort of crazy roller coaster at MT yeah, I mean, honestly, the, the most surreal moment for sure was when we started doing the, these cans, these uh, fancy cans. But one of the cans that I did, the first one that was on like consumer shelves, you know, at like your Costco, your beer shops, all that sort of stuff. Uh, the first time that I saw one of my designs out in the wild um, and, you know, like saw it like on the internet that like people were like sharing it. Uh, that brought me some happy tears for sure. Uh, that was just a really crazy moment. I mean, that was kind of, that's been the biggest, uh, the biggest like joy and kind of, uh, um, the biggest reward, you know, it's just like seeing your art and your designs like out in the wild and seeing people appreciate them and get pumped on them. Yeah. Uh, definitely nothing compares to that feeling. I, I miss, like I said, I miss the days of when we were just a small, you know, 50 person company, but it's still, it's a really gratifying uh, feeling to have been a part of this for so long from, you know, like closer to the beginning times and kind of just like helping build uh, kind of like what the company's become, you know, aesthetically, you know, having a hand in that, there's yeah. been a lot of hands in it. Like it is a huge team effort, but just knowing that like I helped in some way, yeah. has been it's been super cool i really like i said I never thought this would happen a big thank you to kristen for shedding some light on the creative output at modern times to see more of her team's work including new beer releases follow along at modern times beer and thank you all for watching the design of craft beer with mother sponge be sure to check out the other three interviews on the san diego design week website